Hey guys, this is So Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer and this tutorial is how to create mesh panels inside of your sketches in Illustrator. This was a viewer request. If you guys have any requests, feel free to leave them in the comments below or at my site, successfulfashiondesigner.com and I will add them to my tutorial list. All right, so let's jump in. I have a pair of leggings here that I'm gonna work with and if you wanna grab this download, you can. Uh, they're in the Women's Fashion Flat uh, templates that I give away on my site. I'll put the link on the video right now. You can grab those. Otherwise, just work with the file that you have. So I've pulled this mesh texture from Google just to take a look at how a mesh texture is built. And it's really just an offset pattern of these circular dots. It's really just a polka dot offset pattern. So we're gonna build one. I'm not actually gonna use this as the pattern. I'm gonna build one in vector, but I wanted to bring this in here just to show you how it's built. So. I'm gonna grab a fill color and I'm gonna make sure my stroke color is on none. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. And then I'm gonna grab my ellipse tool, hotkey letter L, and I'm gonna draw an ellipse right on top of that rectangle. Now I could change this, pat this fill color to white, which would kind of emulate the mesh, but it's not really emulating the mesh because this is not actually see-through. So if I pull this over my sketch, this portion of the mesh would actually be cut out. That would be reality. So what I can do is I can select both of these objects. I'm gonna use my Shape Builder tool. Shift M is the hotkey. Shape Builder was released in, I believe, CS5. So if you're in CS4 or earlier, you won't have this. Um, you could use the Pathfinder tool instead. But the Shape Builder allows you to divide and merge multiple overlapping shapes. So once I grab my Shape Builder tool, again, hotkey is Shift M. It's about halfway down on the left-hand side of your toolbar. As I hover over this, by default, I see a plus sign next to my cursor. If I hold the Option or Alt key, I see a minus sign. Once I see the minus sign by holding Option or Alt, I can hover over this circle here, click once, and that deletes that shape. So now what I've got is this rectangle with the circle actually cut out so you can see it's actually see-through. So that's a little more realistic. Now, I am in the most current version of Illustrator CC, and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use both the old way of creating a pattern and the new way of creating a pattern using the pattern editing feature. The old way is I'm just gonna take this artwork and I'm gonna drag and drop it into my swatches panel. The reason is because the edges of this shape are perfectly blunt and hard, and that is the edge of the pattern that I want to use. So I just drag and drop that into my swatches panel. Now we can take a look at how our shape came out. Uh, excuse me, our pattern came out. Now that came out huge, so let's transform that. Select our sketch, object, transform, scale. And we want to give it a second. Don't scale strokes and effects. Don't transform objects. We only want to transform patterns, maybe about 4%. That's a rough mock-up. We're just going to say okay. Now that looks okay. Now chances are a whole legging is not uh, mesh. The other thing I notice is that this is a perfect grid repeat and a mesh pattern is really an offset. So I wanna change that. So I'm gonna come over to my swatches panel and this is where we're gonna use pattern editing mode. This is available in CS6 or newer. Come over to your swatches panel, simply double click on the swatch that you want to affect. Whoops, there we are. And with the pattern options panel, we can change the tile type from grid to either brick by row or brick by column. What that does is it just offsets the pattern. If you don't see this dialog box, it's always under window, pattern options. All right, so once you've done that, you're gonna come up here and click done. And now you can see our mesh pattern is a little bit more realistic. Now it wouldn't probably fill the whole lighting, so let's change this back to white and let's actually create some splicing in our illustration to create the mesh uh, panels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my pen tool, I'm going to use a black stroke and no fill color, specifically no fill color. The technique I'm gonna show you will get a little bit funky if you use a fill color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw paths directly on top of my illustration and I'm gonna make sure that they extend beyond both edges of the object and I'm drawing these paths to emulate where I want the mesh panels to go. So what I mean by that is that I wanna make this bottom calf portion mesh and I wanna do a, a spliced panel of mesh right here in the thigh. Okay, so I just draw these paths to emulate where the mesh panels should go. Now I'm gonna select these three paths, not my legging, just these three paths. I'm gonna grab my reflect tool 
So right along the center front of my garment, I will hold the Option or Alt key, click, and I wanna make sure I'm reflecting vertically, not horizontally. With my preview turned on, I can see that reflected correctly. Now I hit copy instead of okay. And what that does is it reflects those paths and it also makes a copy of them for me. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. And the reason I wanna use my direct selection tool is because I wanna select just this leg portion here. If I grab my selection tool, I select the entire illustration, which is all grouped. If your illustration wasn't grouped, you could use the selection tool. But since I only want to grab this one leg, I'm going to do that easily and quickly by using the direct selection tool instead of having to ungroup. So holding the shift key, I will also select this path, this path, and this path. And what I'm going to do is I'm again going to use the shape builder tool. So shift M to use the shape builder tool. Again, I can hold the option or alt key. And as I hover over these, what I call tails, these paths that extend beyond the edge of my legging here, you'll notice they show red. If I click on those, it will delete them. So I do wanna do that. That's the first thing I wanna do is kind of cut off these extraneous tails. Now I can also hold the Option or Alt key and I can click and drag right on top of those to cut multiple of them at a time. So we'll do these ones on the inside as well. So now those are all cut. Now what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and not holding the Option or Alt key with the plus sign, what I can do is I can just click once in each of the shapes that I wanna create as its own shape. So again, I just hovered over this shape and this shape and I just clicked once. Now I know it didn't look like much happened, but in reality what it did is it created a shape right here and it created another shape right here. And so now I've got these shapes that I can perfectly fill with my mesh pattern and easily have perfectly lined up with the rest of my illustration. So I'm gonna do that again over here. I will use my direct selection tool to select these objects here. Shift M, hold the Option or Alt to delete these extraneous paths. Do that once more in the middle and create a shape here, create a shape here. And I missed that little tail right there, so we'll grab that one again. Now, I'm gonna grab each of these, fill that with my mesh pattern, and it's huge, so that's fine. Let's change the size of that. Object, transform, scale. And again, I do not wanna transform objects. I only wanna transform patterns. I actually think that 3%, excuse me, 4% is still a bit big, so let's go down to 2%. And that looks better, so we'll choose OK. And now I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to select the rest of the portions in my legging and they would probably be the same color as the mesh. Now, a couple things you may think. If this doesn't look very accurate to you because the white is really, really stark, which is what I think, I would change this. So I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool. Uh, excuse me, I don't even need to grab my direct selection tool. I'm gonna to simply come over to the swatches panel where my mesh pattern is. I'm gonna double click on that. And instead of having this be a shape that's cut out of the circle, we're actually gonna have a circle in here so we can fill it with like a transparent color. So to do that, I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to select each of these four anchor points that create that circle. Commander Control C to copy. I'm gonna click anywhere off the artwork and Commander Control F to paste. Now I've just pasted a circle that fits exactly in that shape. And instead of having it be red, 100% opacity, I'm gonna change this to maybe 80% opacity. And so that looks a little bit um, more tonal. And I think when you're looking at it on the uh, fashion flat, it's gonna just look a little bit more accurate. So we're just gonna choose done. And now we can see that updated accordingly. You may wanna change it a bit more than that. Now, if you were drawing this in black and white, you could easily, we'll just make a copy of this over here and let's change the color of it very, very easily. We're gonna come up to object, or excuse me, edit, edit colors, recolor artwork, and we're going to change the red to white. And then what we're going to do is we will select this object here, which looks like it's filled with white, but in reality it's filled with a white version of our mesh pattern. So all the artwork inside the mesh pattern is white, so we don't actually see it. When I click on this shape here, you can see over in my swatches panel, this is the pattern swatch that is highlighted. So this shape is filled with this pattern swatch. Now before I click on this pattern swatch, I wanna click off of this object here 
and then double click on the pattern swatch. If I don't do that, it'll reset the scale of this to the original scale of the pattern swatch, which is gonna get really big. Remember, we had to scale it down to about two and a half percent. So I'm gonna double click on this, and now if I look here, I'm gonna grab the, I'm gonna select this circle, and I can choose a really light gray to emulate the mesh, all right? That'll be a little bit more accurate for my sketch. So now we can see we can emulate the mesh with a little bit light gray. So depending on your illustration, you might want the mesh cut out, you might wanna play with the transparency, you might wanna play with gray tones depending on if you're drawing a black and white sketch or a color sketch. Either way, that's how you create mesh in Illustrator, quite simple. You can use this for all different types of textures and play around with filling your garments, but the other trick that I love that I showed you guys was the Shape Builder tool to cut out various portions of your garment for color blocking, mesh panel slicing, anything like that. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I am so Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer. If you like what I'm doing, I would love to send you more free tutorials, content, and templates to help you get ahead in fashion. Visit my website at SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com and check out all of the resources I have there that you do not see here on YouTube. Thanks again, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.